that's all. That's not good. It's oh, holy moly! I know another drone video where I'm in the canal, but you kind of my channel for I guess real life testing and a lot of cold water. Hey folks, it's Ray at DCRamRaker.com here, and today I have a complete autonomous tracking review between the DJI Mavic 3 and the Skydio 2. Now, while there are plenty of other differences between these two drones, for this video, I'm hyper-focused on just the autonomous tracking portions, both tracking me and obstacle avoidance. And in particular, how well these two drones do that while I'm out doing real-world activities and real-world circumstances with real-world trees. Now, while I have plenty of experience with these two drones, it wasn't until just last week that DJI added the active track capability to the Mavic 3. So what I want to do is take these drones out in a back-to-back -back scenario on the exact same course, exact same route, the exact same conditions, the exact same time of day, everything identical, literally just back-to-back -to, -back to see how they perform. The test will start out here on this path in the open field, and it'll go up this slight rise before making a turn around this building and heading its way down this tree-lined path. And of course, this is where in the test we get into the obstacle avoidance side is well as the tracking side. We'll try multiple angles and positions and pretty much go as long as we can until the drones either get back to the finish or until they they don't and they end up in a puddle or canal or tree or something. Now in the case of the Mavic 3, you're gonna need to have your controller with you for active track. Not because it needs it to, like from a following standpoint, but because you need it to be able to control the settings uh, and you need your phone for that particular. So what I've got here is this $20 bike handlebar mount. I've done a review on it up in the corner. It's pretty awesome I and mean, it's mostly awesome. Uh, and you put the controller in it and you put the phone on top of it. You can take the whole kit with you. Now in the case of the Scadio, it does not need a controller, but you do need your phone to be able to set the angles and stuff. So I'm just gonna throw my phone in that same mount just to keep things kind of simple and easy uh, but again neither drone depends on that controller from like a tracking standpoint they're all using their own sensors to do that now because this is a newer video most of you are probably focused on the Mavic 3 after all the Skydio 2 has been out for more than two years now so it's a fairly well understood beast both pro and con uh, but with the Mavic 3 they've introduced active track 5.0 and the main feature there is ability for you to set which follow angle you want for example you want the camera in front of you to the side of you the out front right that kind of stuff whereas in the past you couldn't reliably do that but far more important than that for the Mavic 3 is the new obstacle avoidance sensors and also combined with APAS 5.0, which is the Advanced Pilot Assistant System. Basically the thing that keeps this from crashing into obstacles and how it avoids obstacles and goes around them. Now with the Mavic 3, there's a bunch of sensors on it that keep it from crashing. Uh, so on the back here, we have two rearward facing. We have two upwards facing sensors there. On the front, we have two more frontwards facing. And then on the bottom, we have two more downward facing as well as, it's out of the way, uh, ground detection sensors right there. And it's notable is that in the past, DJI has put their rearward and frontward sensors facing just forward and back, but now they're on kind of the edge there. So they actually see both the sides and the front, giving you a complete 360 degree field of view, according to DJI. Meanwhile, on the Scadio, you also have sensors. Uh, you have three top sensors that focus on basically everything above the aircraft, including the sides. So one, two, three. And then on the bottom, you have three more sensors as well. One, two, three. Uh, and then combine that with the front camera that records what you're doing. And then again, neither drone uses the GPS from the controller or your phone to follow you. Instead, it's just using these sensors to avoid things as well as to go ahead and use the camera for tracking you as an object. Okay, so with that, let's get these drones up in the air. Oh, and this video is definitely not sponsored in any way shape or form I bought both of these drones and they're my money to lose if they end up in the drink or something like that so if you are finding this video interesting useful go ahead and just whack that like button at the bottom the subscribe button it really helps out this video and the channel quite a bit Okay, so now that we have it up in the air here, a couple quick housekeeping items. Uh, the very first one is that I'm on normal mode and not sport mode. Uh, the reason is on DJI drones, in sport mode, it turns off obstacle avoidance. Uh, you can see that if I go to sport mode right there, it goes, turns it off. Back in normal mode, it turns it back on. The next thing is that obstacle avoidance. And you see up here, the flight assistance menu under safety. Uh, I have it on bypass, meaning it's going to go around the object, as opposed to just simply stopping and not following them anymore. Uh, otherwise, you choose brake if you wanted that, or off entirely uh, and you can see the display of the radar map showing me the objects as I'm getting closer to them. Uh, so going back here at this point the last thing to note is that if we go and highlight ourselves it brings up the actor track menu uh, and you see our spotlight POI or ActiTrack. In our case, we're gonna choose ActiTrack. Uh, and you'll see this is the new menu on the Mavic 3, allowing me to choose which orientation. I can tap that little thing in the middle again there, and I can see the options of left or right. I'm gonna keep it to my right where it is right now. And then I need to choose the go button. So I need to choose go, 
otherwise it won't record. Uh, the other thing to note is that in this mode here, so you can see it moves itself into position by the way, uh, and I can't actually change how far out. So I can't use the sticks anymore to change uh, how far out it goes. I can change the orientation right here like this, no problem. Uh, but if I go front and back, it just goes up and down. So I can change the altitude uh, like this, but I can't change the distance away from me, which is kind of a bit of a bummer. Uh, so the last thing to note is that on the recording frame rates, the highest you can choose is 4K 60. You can't choose any of the 5K modes. You also cannot use the tell lens. Uh, so the zoom lens is not an option here. Let's get rolling. We're gonna go up this little tiny hill here, barely a hill at all. Should be staying to my right this entire time. And I'm gonna turn to the right. So I clip into my pedals, there we go. Turn to the right here. So let's see if it does that. And we're gonna go straight into this kind of tree tunnel. So there we go, it's repositioning to my right right now. It's got some trees coming up on its left. It should avoid, I hope. Okay, there we go. Now, it's taken a pretty interesting route in between these trees. Uh, it's not ideal. And it's chosen now to go from behind me instead. Now, given the fact that it cannot go ahead and actually put it further out away from the trees, I'm not opposed to being behind me. Uh, so I'm gonna go a little faster now, bring it up speed here. And so far so good, it's avoiding the trees up there. I'm gonna lower it down a little bit though. You can see the radar map showing it's getting pretty close. So trying to lower it. It's not terribly listening to me. I'm interested here, watch this. I'm gonna slow down. There's a giant opening right here. Let's see if it goes out there. Back to my side where it should be. Yeah, it's giving it a whirl. Okay, there we go. Hey, now we're listening. Good job, little guy. You were doing way better than the uh, Air 2S. So you're getting pretty ballsy with those tree branches. Uh-oh, too ballsy. Come on, catch back up. That's not where I would fly, my little friend. Yeah, just get back there, that's safer. So this is the main issue is I cannot change how far away to set it. I wanna set it further out from those trees so it's not so close. Okay, so what we're gonna do here is gonna flip a Yui. I'm gonna go back into Active Track, and I'm gonna put it in front of me. Let's see if I can get that to work. So we'll stop it, trace in front. There we go. And I've got go. So let's see if you can do this. It's a tricky business here. I'll go slow at first. I'll let you get yourself out there. Yeah, you don't wanna do that. You get yourself out there, you can do it. You can do it, there you go, good job. Okay, now we're gonna go a little faster. Don't be screwing this up. Okay, I'm impressed. I'm also really darn close to this, by the way. About three meters away right now. Come on, you're getting higher than you need to be. And it's not really listening when I tell it to go lower. Uh, kinda now it is this time. It's, okay. A little too close. Measuring subject distance failed. Okay, so I've repositioned it in front of me. There we go. And then go. So I'm gonna go slowly here. I'm also gonna go lower it down a bit more. Uh, 15K an hour, like 10 miles per hour. Let's kind of get it going a little faster here. So far, so good though. Like this isn't horrible. This is way faster than any DJI drone could go in the past. But as I'm approaching about 18 kilometers an hour here, it's not liking me, likely because of these trees. It's probably not to do with the speed per se. I'm gonna try to put it out to the left here. Let's see if I can do that. There we go, left. What are you gonna do, little guy? My bet is this is gonna do it up there, but it's kind of getting to the end of our turnaround point. Okay, this is an opportunity coming up in three, two, one. It should be all clear to be able to pull this UE off. So it should easily better get around me. There we go. Okay, and left, good job. Now don't hit the tree, don't hit the tree. Oh, good job. That's, oh, that's not good. Oh, you survived, holy cow. Straight into it. It's, oh, dolly moly. Oh, and it's down. Oh, I wish I had a camera on that. Well, I guess I do, but. So it's over there. So it went like this, hit this tree around, and then just swooping like Top Gun style crash right to over there. You can see it blinking, but it didn't hit the water, which is good. 
but I think that's the end of its test. So about now you're probably asking yourself, why do I do all these tests by canals? And the simple answer is I live in the Netherlands. Everything is by a canal. Everything's by water. They're like the whole country is basically under sea level. So it's either a little canal or a big canal. So I chose a little canal. I'm leaving on the socks because this is some really sharp hay knee. I don't know what the hell it is, but it's sharp. Oh, that does not feel good. Oh, I'm basically up to my, let's go get my drone. There's a lady on a ridge over there looking at me like, what is this issue? Okay, well, the gimbal's not in the optimal orientation right now. Uh, I don't see any props broken. Uh, the gimbal's cracked right there. Yep, can we pop it back in place? Oh, good thing I bought the warranty. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and get this drone back across. Oh, fudge, this is cold. That is up to places where the sun does not shine. Oh, this is cold. Oh, I need to do these tests too. Companies, can't you make this stuff in like summer? Now, I wanna take a second to point out something really interesting that led to the crash itself. Uh, and it isn't what you necessarily think. Both of these drones throughout the entire tracking hit the end of tree branches, a little tiny twig portions, if you will, multiple times. But neither drone actually crashed due to that. They're both very, very resilient in that, and they stabilize and keep on going. Uh, but in the case of the Mavic 3, when it would either get behind because of a tree branch or behind because it just couldn't figure out the right way to get through an obstacle, it would get riskier in its behavior in the following couple seconds. You can see that here where it gets really close to a tree trying to catch up. And in fact, this is the exact same thing that happened at the very end after it hit those tree branches, it stabilized, and then it tried to catch up and went straight into the tree. And what's interesting is that every time that risky maneuver happens, it almost seems to lower its guard for obstacle avoidance for just the briefest of seconds. You see, the radar map does not initially show the tree trunk, and then the last second it shows the tree trunk, which to me means there's some sort of processing or algorithm issue going on here after it tries to say, hey, entering risky behavior mode, and then it doesn't like avoid a tree trunk. Now the good news there is I think that's something they could fix in a firmware update down the road. It's clearly an algorithm thing, it's not a sensor thing. So with that, let's jump into Scadio. Okay, so we got the Scadio in the drone. My feet are getting pretty chilly willy right now. Uh, and I'm gonna go ahead and tap myself. There we are. Uh, and the Scadio is basically gonna be where it's gonna be. I've got it set off to my right hand side. There we go, so set to the right hand side. See if these will even clip in right now with all the mud caked in them. There we go. I'm gonna increase the range just slightly to try to match uh, what I had for the, with this, let it roll, let's roll. Back up this little hill, we'll keep it to the right. We'll eventually throw it behind me at some point when we get bored of having it not crash into things. See if I can get clipped in. There we go. Here, turn, turn to the right, so we should see it flip around. Hopefully not hit anything. Went over the bridge around the trees, clearly sees the trees. It's taking a much smarter course of action out there. Let's get past this boat. It is definitely like a little bit close to these tree limbs, but so far so good. It's going further and further out. All right, now it just looks like it's rethinking its life choices. It doesn't like being over there, which again, just like the Mavic 3 makes sense. No problems following me. Let's see out here, I'll slow down again, just like with the Mavic 3. See if it shoots itself out the side of the gap. It's got, yep, it does that. There we go. Let's pull a Yui here and we'll throw it in front of me. See if it wants to slide past me. Okay, it's going wide around me. There we go, see if it gets in front of me now. Got to do some duck and cover there. Hasn't really found its place. Oh, it hit a little branch, one little twig, but it, it recovered just like the Mavic 3, had a bunch of branches along the way and Eventually was killed, but here we go. Come on, find your spot up there. Oh, that's a big branch. Oh, you just clipped that one too. You are lawn mowing through everything today. Apparently the name of the game. So it's having trouble finding its, its moment out there. See if I slow down enough. Now keep in mind with the Mavic 3, I actually let it get ahead of me. I put it in front of me, there we go. So now it's got its time, it's ahead of me. Perfect, I'm still struggling. We got a lot of mud caked in these cleats. They're not designed for mud. Okay, so we got it ahead of me. So exact same spot. I'm gonna tell it to go to the left of me when it gets a chance. 
Ain't wasted no time in doing that, that's fine. Around that, around the building, and then here comes a tree that, it's a tree by the way, I took out the Mavic Air 2S. Here comes the Mavic 3 tree. What's it gonna do? It's gonna go wide, is it gonna lose me? Oh, is it gonna catch back up? I see it back there. Oh, you got me little buddy. There we go, good job. And we'll do a Yui right here. And we'll bring it back to land before we kill another drone. Well done, little guy, well done. Okay, so ultimately when we look at autonomous tracking, there are two pieces to that puzzle. The first one is the object tracking. So if I'm going behind a bush or a shrub or something, does it reacquire me after it loses me for the briefest of moments? And the second part is obstacle avoidance while doing that autonomous tracking. In the case of the Mavic 3, it's actually pretty darn good in the tracking department. Uh, in fact, it only lost me once for the briefest of moments. And while the Scadio 2 didn't have that issue on this particular run or this particular day, I've certainly seen that over the last two years here and there. So it's not something that's totally unique to the DJI Mavic 3. Now the Mavic 3 does have additional limitations there though. For example, the fact that I cannot change the distance away from the subject is a huge downer and it puts us in a riskier position. I would have preferred that be further away from the trees so I could just stay away from the trees. Where I could do that with a Scadio 2, I couldn't do it here. Similarly, because you cannot use a telephoto lens, it has to get closer to the subject. That's both bad from like a safety and risk standpoint, but it's also bad from a cinematography standpoint. The shot would look way cooler on the telephoto lens at 4K than it would on the main lens at 4K because you would have a better, better perspective of speed as well as depth of field. Now, setting that aside for a second, we get into the obstacle avoidance question. Uh, and now in this case, the Mavic 3 is actually the best drone that DJ has ever made in terms of obstacle avoidance. Of course, that's sort of like giving the most improved award. It just means they were really bad at it in the past. But this is legitimately the best drone they've made in that category. As you saw, it failed in a rather unusual way. So I'm hoping that's something DJI can fix in an update down the road. Which doesn't mean the Scadio 2 is perfect. Uh, from an obstacle avoidance standpoint, it's certainly not perfect. I've crashed this uh, once or twice over the last two years, though it's still running just fine. There's no like obvious scratches on it. Uh, and also from a cinematography standpoint, this clearly is not as good as this. When it was up in the air, it was much clearer, much cleaner on the Mavic 3 than the Scadio 2. Uh, and that shows, and those are all things you have to balance. Uh, at the moment though, I have to balance a broken drone versus a functional drone. So it's kind of not an even scale. Still, I'm interested to see if DJI can fix this in future firmware updates. I have a feeling in their rush to get ActiveTrack out ahead of their planned January timeframes, they just weren't quite, it's just not ready yet. Simple as that. So I'll be looking forward to that. And if things do change, and if I hear things have changed in terms of that algorithm, I will happily test it again. With that, thanks for watching. If you found this video interesting and useful, like that like button or hit subscribe for plenty more sports technology goodness. There are plenty of other videos on the screen as well from past ActiveTrack tests and tracking tests and autonomous tracking tests and all this sort of thing that you can enjoy in the meantime. Have a good one.